Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Wisdom Wednesday podcast with your host, Dr. Mary Seegers. And here it is the third Wednesday of the month, Wednesday, November the 15th, 2023. I'm so honored to have you with us. I know that uh, you could be doing anything else, but I'm so glad you joined us today. Now, you know the drill before I introduce my phenomenal guest today. I'm so honored to have her. You know the drill. Grab your coffee cup or your water. I'm drinking water today in my coffee cup. <laughs> Perhaps you want tea or orange juice and join in on the conversation. Officially, I want to welcome my guest, Mia Williams. How are you this morning? I am doing wonderful, Dr. Mary. How are you? And hello to the listening audience. It is a beautiful day. It really is. It's a great day. It's a brand new day we've never seen before. And we're going to just have a great time in this conversation. Let me tell you a little bit more about Mia Williams. She's a friend we met through an association that we belong to. But Mia Williams is a business leader, a teacher, a mentor, and a motivational speaker. She is the chief executive officer and founder of Woman Doing Our Own Thing. I love that. A business process improvement consulting company. And she'll tell us more about that, but is dedicating to helping organization and leaders more consistent so they can develop a mindset for success. Oh, how we need that. Mia proudly served our country for over 20 years as a knowledge operation manager in the United States Air Force. I salute you and I thank you for your service, my sister. She participated in both statewide and overseas assignments, receiving numerous awards and decoration throughout her career. Her assignments afforded her the opportunity to work with local and foreign dignitaries and high ranking military officials. She completed temporary duty travel assignments overseas. Uh, she assisted the USAF Special Forces. And prior to her retirement, she was stationed at the Joint Special Operation Command at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. North Carolina. Mia is also a 911 Pentagon survivor. Oh, I, we're going to hear about that. Oh, yes. But <laughs> after her military retirement, Mia trans, transitioned into the corporate sector as a senior business process engineer consultant. Mia has 25 years plus of comprehensive knowledge of process improvement with underlining the Lean Six Sigma and agile principles, approaches, and methodology. Oh, this woman is high power. This is a powerhouse up in here. <laughs> she performs training, coaching, and mentorship to support organization leaders, solve problems, and build new capabilities. I mean, we can go on. Her, she, her education is just top notch. She's a Educational achievements include a Bachelor of Science in Business Management from the University of Maryland, College Park, Maryland, and a Master's in Business Administration from Webster University, St. Louis, Missouri. She's a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt. All right. <laughs> and the list goes on and on. She is just a wealth of uh, knowledge and information. So Wow, how how do you do all the things that you do, Mia? I love it. <laughs> wow, Dr. Mary, you know, listening to you say all that is very humbling because sometimes you don't um, appreciate the things that you've accomplished in life. And I know we're talking about gratitude today. So just hearing you share all that, it, it makes my heart grateful that God enabled me to do all of those things. And I'm here today to share about gratitude. So it is just a, a blessing to be here. That's powerful. That's, and like you said, when you're like, who is that person, right? But, you know, you have been imparted with such great wisdom like that. And when you talk about gratitude, I think of, isn't it a mindset? It's an attitude. It's it's a whole different way of, uh, of thinking. Would you not agree with that? Uh, absolutely. There, there absolutely is power in gratitude. Um, I'm, I'm reminded of 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter where it says, rejoice always. 
pray without ceasing and everything to give thanks because in everything we should give thanks. And when we give thanks, then that gives us power to do more. Yes. You know, on the first episode, I had mentioned when you have a, a mindset or an attitude of being grateful, you know, it leaves out the complaining. You know, you're just grateful for what you do have. <clears throat> Before we came on the air, I was just sharing how there's been so many uh, home goings that I've been going to, you know, so, you know, we're grateful for life, you know, someone, had, you know, to have uh, hands to be able to extend your hands or okay. eyes, even with your four eyes to see, you know, ears sure. to hear, I mean, so much to be grateful for. And mm -hmm. I had challenged the, uh, the audience, you know, beginning this month, uh, November 1st for 30 days, write down every day, three things that you are grateful for. So would you mind sharing what are you grateful for today? The three things that you could be grateful for today. I know there's so many, but three. <laughs> yes, there are so many. Oh my goodness, Dr. Mary, there are so many. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little different twist on it. I, I know a lot of times we say we're grateful for family and health and all those things. And I am grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But I really was thinking about that this morning. And I'm grateful for my mistakes. Ooh. I'm grateful for my mistakes because it helped me to improve and to become better. I'm grateful for the challenges that I've had throughout my life. And I've had several because it helped me to grow into the woman that I am today. And I would not be here if I had not experienced those challenges and overcome them. And thirdly, I am grateful for my disappointments. Now, someone watching this may say, what in the world is she talking about? But yes, I am grateful for my disappointments because it helps me to know what things really matter the most. Ooh. Now that is powerful. We got to do a repeat on that because we don't <laughs> look at it like that. You know, we're always thinking for the good things or for the, the things that we, you know, your family, like you said, and health and all that, but let's break that down. That is, that will help you to grow. That will stretch you that allow you to know your character. This, you know, I'm oh, so much. And we're going to break that down. So your first one, you're thankful for your mistakes. Was that what it was? Mistakes. Yes, ma'am. I am thankful for my mistakes. And, and again, you know, I'm sure that the listening audience is probably thinking that she has lost her absolute mind. <laughs> but, but no, when I think about the mistakes that I've made, I'm not perfect by any means. But when I think about the mistakes that I made, it really taught me how to become better because I don't want to make those same mistakes again. I don't want to go through that again. Can I get an amen for those of you who have made mistakes? You don't want to go through that again. I so it, it helped me to, to improve myself. Uh, to really do a, a inward look, to do a self-assessment of, of what are those things, Mia, that you really thought you had going on, but you absolutely don't. What are those things you need help with? A lot of times we, we are too prideful to ask for help, but I'm learning in this season of my life that I need to ask for help. So um, my mistakes have helped me to improve myself and to become a better person holistically. That is so, so, uh, the truth is it will set us free, won't it? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, it will. <laughs> I know I'm looking at the podcast, I mean, at the Facebook, and one, one woman said, wow, mistakes and disappointment. That's loud and clear. That is so true. Amen, sister. Amen. High five. <laughs> I know. It was right. it made me think of my mentor uh, years ago uh, has made a statement, Mary, either you're going to win or you're going to learn. And that's where you learn the most mm. mistakes and you're grateful for those mistakes. You know, it, it helps. Yeah. Wow. What about disappointments? You know, no one likes to be disappointed, you know. Both. Well, you know, Dr. Mary, I, I've had some challenges, so I'm grateful for my challenges as well. Yes. Um, you know, one of the things being in the military, uh, you know, we had to learn how to, to make it. We had to learn how to do more with less. We had to learn how to improvise. Mm -hmm. And that oftentimes was challenging because it put you out of your comfort zone. And then after retiring, you know, things still happen in life that you're not necessarily prepared for, even though you may think you should be. Uh, there are times that, you know, just like we were talking that things happen in life that are very hurtful, that are just, that are painful, that, you know, get you off track. Right. But when you stop and think about it, those challenges are really helping to push you, mm. pushing you into your purpose. Yeah. And when you can look at it from that perspective, it helps you to grow and to learn how to become a better you. 
So when I think about the challenges I've gone through, wow. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Again, you know, it it really stretched me. I I think you had said stretching. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about how a rubber band, you stretch a rubber band. Mm -hmm. And when you stretch it, the more you stretch it, the bigger it becomes. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes God will stretch us because there is so much greatness inside of us, but we don't we don't understand the potential that's within us. The Mm -hmm. spirit of the Lord lives within us. And because he's so great, he's so big, he's so powerful. How can we think that we're just going to sit here and not grow? We can't help but grow. So that's when we get challenged and we have to rely on him to help us to get through that. Yes. Oh, Mia, that is so true. You know, when you said the word challenge, I think I want to, I'm almost sure in Chinese, it means opportunity. You know, it doesn't mm. look at the negative part of it. If you have a challenge, and then I read somewhere else, he said, and within the word challenge, it's called, you see the word change, C-H-A-N-E, out of challenge. So the challenge will allow us to change or to man- manifest, uh, manifest into something greater like you were just talking about. So don't look at it as a negative thing. Grateful for those things, you know? <clears throat> and I think about what you were talking about um, uh, challenges uh, in the book of uh, Joseph, you know, all the challenges he had negative, but he made it turn it around for his good, you know, so we, mm-hmm. we got, it's all about that mindset. It's how you think about how you're going to respond to it. That is so good because, you know, uh, someone wish they were in our shoes, you know, that's another way of being looking, looking at being grateful. So, wow, if I could just be do you really want to be in my shoes? You don't know what I what kind of shoes, you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And you know, it's something you said that, Dr. Mary, because recently mm-hmm. um, I was thinking about this young lady that I really admire. Um, mm-hmm. She and I are friends on Facebook. I don't yes. know her personally, yeah. but she's a, a very um, intriguing person. She's doing a lot. And I said, wow, I wish I could be like her. I wish I could be doing what she's doing. Right. And uh, recently she shared a little bit of her testimony. Mm. And she has gone through so much. She's gone through physical abuse, mental abuse, drug abuse, oh all of these things. Yeah. And I said, wow, to look at her. I mean, she's absolutely gorgeous. Mm. You would never look at her and think yeah. that she went through all that. And right. I said, man, yeah. I don't think I want to go through what she went through after hearing her testimony. <laughs> no, 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 God, don't, don't put me through that. <laughs> but a lot of times we, you know, we get envious, we get jealous, mm-hmm. um, And we want to be in somebody else's shoes because we look at them now, but we don't know what it took for them to get to their now. And so, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head when you said that, Dr. Mary. Ooh, that's so powerful. I tell you. And, you know, I always tell people, don't wait till Thanksgiving when family come together friend, and say, what you're thankful. I remember when we were younger, mom would have us, what you thankful for, little Mary? What you thankful for, you know? And we don't have to wait until then. It's something to be thankful and grateful for every day. You know, I always said, uh, just waking up to, you know, just to wake up to see another day, you know, <clears throat> is something to be grateful for, you know, for your health. I know that's important as well, especially as we living longer and we grow, you know, living. Uh, I have a, a cousin who's like 91 years old. She looks like she's in her seventies. So, I mean, you know, she says it's about having good health and make sure I take care of myself, sleep and, and, and eat right and, you know, drink plenty of water and take walks and exercise this body. So we have so much to be grateful for. You know, you can write a book about it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I had suggested people start writing their uh, grateful journey, uh, a journal. Do you journal at all, uh, Mia? Uh, uh, are you a journalist? <laughs> yes, I have many journals. <laughs> I have many, many journals. But you know, it's powerful because when you're able to write those things down, um, you know, in a journal fashion, it really helps you to keep a track of those good things in your life. Yes. And, um, you know, as I mentioned before, one of the things I'm grateful for is disappointments. Mm-hmm. If I look back over some of the journals that I've written, I reflect upon those disappointments and I'm like, wow, Mia, you went through that. And yes. I emphasize the word through because you're not there now. Right. You overcame that yeah. and you're stronger because of that. You're wiser because of that. Mm-hmm. You're more appreciative because of that. Yeah. And so when you have the ability to write those things down, you can keep track of those things that are good in your life. Um, mm-hmm. It helps to, to motivate you. 
And it also moves out any opportunity for negativity to come in. Come when you're focusing on what's good, you don't have time for anything bad. That's you don't right. have time for that. So I think it's wonderful that you are challenging people to keep a gratitude journal because we have lost our way as far as focusing on the good things. You know, you listen to the news, you watch social media, it's always something, 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 something. Yeah. And it pushes out the good. Yes. That's not the way God designed it to be. So we've got to get back into the architect framework that God designed. So yes, absolutely. I have many journals that I've kept throughout the years. <laughs> you know, when you were speaking, it made me think about some days we may not feel grateful, but if you go back to that journal and like you mm. said, remember when, and if he's done it before, he'll do it again. So sometimes we don't always feel grateful. You know, you just kind of got up on the wrong side of the bed or whatever it is, you know, some, you heard some negative news. And if you go back, and, you know, read that, which and, you know, it'll just do something to your heart. It'll, it's like, you know what, let me stop this uh, pity party you know, and let me get back on, you know, that <clears throat> I'm grateful. I've often tell uh, my granddaughter and uh, she's 25 uh, now. And I said, you know, you're, you're so young and you're so, you know, energetic. I said, but go and visit somebody in the nursing home. I used to take them around Thanksgiving and Christmas time to let them know, you know, she said, Granny, when you get old, I'm not going to never let you go to a nursing home. I said, can I get you to get that in writing? <laughs> you know? But I'm just saying, and they were so grateful to see the young people. They came and I had her and my, her brother singing songs to the people in the nursing home. And they were like, oh, thank you, little one. You know, they were grateful for that. And so sometimes when you do something for somebody else, that's showing gratefulness and gratitude to someone else. And not always about us. It could be about others as well. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And that's so, so inspirational that you do that because I always try to find ways to give back. Yes. Um, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, my mother brought up in me to always think about other people. And then it was just reiterated being in the military because service was just who we were. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm always looking for opportunities to, to give back to other people. And right now, one of the things I do in my spare time is I volunteer at a woman's homeless shelter. And um, it's it's so Ooh. energizing for me. I look forward to going. When I when I can't go, I get disappointed. And I remember one time I was at the shelter, and one of the ladies asked me, "Why do you come here?" And it you know kind of took took me by surprise that she said that. And I said, "What do you mean? Why do I come here?" She said, "Most people are afraid of us. You're not afraid of us." I said, "No, I'm not afraid of us." Being here gives me strength. It gives me encouragement because you all have a story. If yeah. you sit and talk to those people, some mm. of them are more educated. They have more experience. They have more talents and gifts than you would even imagine. Yeah. And um, I told her, I said, no, I said, no, I'm not afraid. I know God has a purpose for me being here. And yeah. every single time I go, yeah. one of those ladies ministers to me, literally. See, so it's, it's truly a blessing. Wow, isn't that powerful? Yeah, yes. You never know what what person has gone through or been through or or even going through. So I love that. Be kind as as much as you can because that could be you if it's not the grace of God. You know that, <clears throat> and me or me, you know. And every time I see people, uh, cars on the side, I say, Lord, please, if it's a female or a male, you know, make them have safety around them because that could be me. You know, I, back in the day, I remember I used to stop myself. Don't be stopping because you know, you don't know how people are, but you want to help where you can, you know what I'm saying? And it's sad that our society is so evil sometimes that you don't even can't stop and help a stranger, you know, because that, like I said, that could have been me. It could have been you. But we still have to do the things that we can do, you know, uh, to help one another because we are not an island to ourselves. I need you. You need me. We need each other. And that's how God made us to be relational with one another, you know, <clears throat> especially mm -hmm. with the holiday coming up. I, like I said, I can't believe Thanksgiving's next week already, <laughs> you know, Turkey <laughs> Day. But uh, they have said that statistics have shown that more suicide rates are happening during the holidays because they feel alone, abandoned, uh, you know, uh, and I think from the pandemic, how we felt so isolated and, and separated from people. So we'll be lifting up those people who feel like there's no one, you know, in their family or friends to love on them. 
to make sure that they're safe as well, you know, because uh, I just hate to hear that, you know, uh, yeah. the rate, the suicide rate goes up around the holiday time. And that's supposed to be a time of gathering together with friends and family and being grateful for one another. But uh, uh, we can do something about it. We can always lift them up in prayer, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> So I know that shelter must be something you enjoy. Tell me a little bit about your uh, military experience and how grateful was it? Did you volunteer or, I mean, how, how did that all happen, Mia, if you don't mind? <laughs> Women in the military. Sure. sure. <laughs> well, um, honestly, for those who, who know me very well, um, who grew up with me, yeah. going into the military was probably the last thing they would have expected for me to do. <laughs> So um, I went into the military because I'm an only child and my parents really couldn't afford to send me to school. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was good in school academically, but it, it just it was a lot and it's even more expensive now. But uh, yeah. I took it upon myself to say, you know, I'm, I'm going to go into the military. And so being in the military, as far as uh, having gratitude, um, we just had Veterans Day. Yeah. And I will yeah. say um, one of the things that I really am able to um, reflect upon in Veterans Day is just the sacrifices that those who are in uniform have paid for our country. <laughs> Yeah. And even being in the military, I don't know that you really, because you're so focused on the mission, you're so focused on, you know, what you have to do. Right. Um, it's hard to kind of stop and just take a breath and say, wow, I'm really doing this for my country. But <laughs> but now that I, I've retired, I'm able to look back. It's yeah. such a great honor to say that I wore the uniform. Yeah. And especially as a, a woman, mm -hmm. a black woman to say I wore the uniform and I represented um, so many things for so many people in, in this country. Yeah. And um, just the gratitude of, of that alone is is almost sometimes too much to bear. But uh, one of the things I, I recall in the military is that um, when I was stationed at Anderson Air Force Base in Guam, mm -hmm. uh, there was a period where we were uh, assisting refugees that were coming from another country into the United States, and they were using Guam as like a stopping point. Right. And so uh, the Kurdish refugees were coming there. Mm -hmm. And this was several years ago, but I, I remember seeing those people get off the plane and literally they had nothing, absolutely nothing. They were uh, in barely in clothes. Mm. And um, oh when God. they saw us, they were so just excited to see us because that that was a representative of, of there's hope, there's life after this. Yeah. And I'll never forget this little girl. She was the cutest little girl, but she was so, she was covered with dirt and oh. soot and mud. Oh. Um, she was with her, with her dad. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know where her mom was. She didn't speak any English, mm -hmm. but I, I do know that, you know, when she saw me and saw the others in uniform, she, little tears just rolled down her face and she looked at her dad and she smiled. And I don't know what exactly their language transitioned into, mm -hmm. but I did see those smiles and I believe that those smiles represented that they were at a good place. They were at a place of peace. Mm -hmm. So that was a moment of gratitude for me to, to know that I could help mm -hmm. someone in that way to be able to have a new life. Mm -hmm. My goodness, I just know. to be able to help them to get settled and, and to have a place that they didn't have to worry anymore. They didn't have to look over their shoulders. Mm -hmm. They were able to get food on a regular basis, running water, things that we take for granted here in the United States. Yeah. So there's many opportunities that um, I had while serving in the, in the uniform to mm -hmm. experience gratitude and, and now being retired, you know, definitely I'm, I'm always thinking about my brothers and sisters that are active duty, that are overseas, that are fighting right now mm. uh, for, for the safety of our country and of others. Yes. Wow. That is so powerful. Because like you said, uh, being a female, being an African-American female in, you know, in uniform, that's a, that's powerful. That's powerful, you know, and serving our country. And I, again, I, I, my hats off to you and honor you for doing all that you do so we can have our freedom. That's a plus right there. I'm great grateful for to you for that. <laughs> yes. 
So let me just ask you, when you went overseas, how was that um, a different experience of, of showing gratitude? I mean, would you have had an opportunity to do that had it not been for the military, you know? You know, there there are so many things that the military opened my eyes up to. I'm from a very small town um, in West Virginia. I'm, I'm from Beckley, West Virginia. Uh -huh. And um, while I had a, a overall good upbringing, there were a lot of things I didn't have privy to. I, I didn't know about. I had never even seen the ocean before until I went into the military. So it definitely gave me a, a widening, a widening perspective of the world's view and not just my little view and my little world. Mm -hmm. um, being overseas, it's, it's like, wow, you know, they have such a respect for the United States. Yes. They, yes. they see us in such a high esteem mm -hmm. and um, being there, you know, they look at us Americans and, <laughs> They, they treat us like, wow, you're an American? You're an American? I mean, they get so excited uh, right. to have us there and, and to share with us and to talk to us. Wow. And so wow. it was just amazing, uh, amazing just how they welcomed us and how they showed uh, honor to us being Americans. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't always happen in every place that you go overseas. But with my experience, that's that's what I received. And I was, I was so grateful for that yeah. um, to know that, I could receive that love even mm -hmm. when I wasn't in my own country. And um, being overseas was a beautiful experience to live among the people, to learn their culture, to understand their history, yes. um, to, to learn their language, a little of their language, uh, <laughs> to taste their foods. Oh, yeah. You know, um, it, it really helped me to just widen my mm -hmm. um, appreciation for other people. Yes. So it was a wonderful, wow. wonderful time. I'm so glad that I was able to go overseas and experience that. And I would love to go back again. Mm -hmm. Wow. 20 years. That's a bulk of great bulk of your, your life, you know, in the military. And so that that's, that's a blessing. That is truly a blessing. I tell you, are you seeing more and more um, African-American young women enlisting or, or getting involved in the military so they can have opportunities such as you have? Are you seeing more of that or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. More, more are uh, having that interest um, is, is being presented to them in mm -hmm. a way that they're um, wanting to be a part of it. I, I can't say it's always been that way, even for women in general, but, but now uh, they are definitely making it more uh, affordable and more equal as far as the opportunities that are there for women. I mean, you see women more in combat situations, um, in career fields where it was predominantly men, now you're starting to see women. Even in the senior leadership ranks, you're seeing more women uh, wow. that are being promoted to those senior ranks in the military. So yes, absolutely, barriers are being broken and that's a blessing. That's powerful. And that's something to be grateful for. It, yes. it takes one to start it and it could be leaders and examples for the our next generation that you can do whatever you need to do and be grateful about it. You know, <clears throat> you know, I think gratefulness and gratitude will open up more doors than being um uh being ungrateful, you know, because like I said, you don't have time to complain. You don't have time to whine. You don't have time, you know, to think of all the negatives of what didn't happen or what, you know, what you don't have. You're grateful for what you do have. And and, and that's something to really, to grab a hold of. I think if more people do that, uh, the life, the life will be better. I really do believe that, you know, you see more smiles or you, you give a smile, you receive a smile. You know? <laughs> yes. So. And that has to be, do you think that gratitude or having a, that attitude of gratefulness, does that have to be taught or is it something that God put on the inside of us? I mean, what are your thoughts about that? Is that something that has to be taught to our young people or to, even to some of our seniors, you know, I mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, in my personal opinion, I believe that that is something that is a part of all of us mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. God created all of us. He right. created each and every one of us. We were uniquely made by his wonderful craftsmanship. Yeah. And um, and sometimes I, I think that, you know, as we get a little older, have a little bit more, um, we forget mm -hmm. about the simplistic things in life. So sometimes there comes a point where we have to be taught mm -hmm. to appreciate certain things. You know, I, I think about when I was a child, just being able to, to go outside and play. 
right. have a good time, you know, um, that was just everything to me. But now as an adult, how often do I just take the time to act silly and play and be goofy? Yeah. You don't really do that as an adult because you're you're busy working, you have responsibilities, you got bills to pay, you got a house to take care of, you got, you know, all these things. Yeah. Why not take 10 minutes just to be silly and goofy and, and have a good time, you yeah. know? So, so yes, I definitely think that it is something that's already inside of us, mm -hmm. but sometimes it has to be it has to be turned on or ignited. Come on. Us. Yeah, I like that. Like I said, stir up, stir up that gift, you know. It's, yes, absolutely. Because life can cause people to be so bitter and so um, doubtful and so negative. You've seen people mm -hmm. like this, like, you know, if I can't get you to smile or laugh, you know, I can't be around you too long. You try to encourage them. You're trying to uplift them. You're trying to inspire. And sometimes people just been so, for whatever reason, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but life is is too too short to be walking around with sorrowfulness and madness and craziness. You know, it's just yeah. too short. So enjoy that. It's good to laugh. That helps us. You know, I love to laugh, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> and so it helps us to know that life doesn't have to be that serious all the time. Like you said, when, when was the last time you you went out as an adult and play? I remember my grandson that it was, I forget the name of, but it was some kind of bouncy thing. And I took him and his friends. This is when he was younger though. And I, I, I said, Granny, you're just going to drop me off, right? And pick us back up. I said, no, I'm going in there too. to have me some fun. Yes, said, absolutely. <laughs> you had a good time, I know. He's the person say, now, don't embarrass me, Granny. You're going to be, you too old to be jumping on, on these little bouncy. I said, no, I'm not. I said, is anybody who can bounce up and down? I'm one of them. And I, of course, I didn't go right stay with him and his friends. I went over to another one. And we, I had a good time. He came over there with me. I said, All right. Yes, yes. <laughs> way too short to be mad, frustrated, and upset all the time. You got to enjoy life, you know, <laughs> be That's grateful. So Do it. That's so true. That's so true. And I, and I did say that um, I'm grateful for disappointments because it, it <laughs> helps you to appreciate those things that matter most. Mm -hmm. And as you were talking, Dr. Mary, I thought about um, how oftentimes we can get stuck in our disappointments. Come on, say that. Uh, sure. We can get stuck in that mindset of, of grief and depression and oppression to the point we don't live anymore. We literally are walking around like a zombie. Mm. And I'm speaking from experience because yeah. at one point in time, I was so just uh, grief stricken, heartbroken, disappointed, angry, bitter. And mm. so I literally, I was just functioning. I wasn't living. Wow. But when you're able to take those things that disappoint you, Mm -hmm. and and really appreciate those things that matter most mm -hmm. you can break free of that yeah. you can break free of that and you can live again god mm -hmm. can resuscitate you again Come on and when he <laughs> is able to do that my goodness when he's able to do that there's such a freedom in that you yeah. know I, I can't sit here and tell you that my life is perfect because it's not nobody has a perfect life I but i can be grateful because I'm not who I used to be. I don't do the things I used to do. I don't stay awake all night long crying my eyes out like I once did. You know what I mean? So I can be grateful and have that attitude of gratitude because I know that I'm not who I used to be. And I give God all the glory for that. I know that's right. I hear you. I'm reading more on your bio. You currently a peer leader and bridge, a bridges guy with the Women Veterans Network. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that? What is that all about? <laughs> sure. The Women Veteran Network Woven, I have to give a huge shout out to that organization. It is a community for women veterans. So if there happen to be any women veterans, whether active duty or retired, separated, that are watching please plug into Woven um, because this is a, a network of women that have experienced a uh, military life mm -hmm. and are helping those that are still experiencing military life. So we're really a community of women veterans that support each other, that uplift each other, that help supply resources for one another and mm -hmm. just love on one another. Um, when you separate from the military, it's, it's definitely a void there. It's definitely a void there because the military is, is like a family. 
-hmm. It's a very uh, connected family. And when you leave the military, you leave a part of you, you know, and for some people, that's, that's a difficult transition. Yeah. And especially as women, mm -hmm. we don't have a lot uh, that's out here in the um, community for women veterans. Mm -hmm. So this organization was birthed to provide that. And there's some phenomenal leaders that have stepped up to the plate and they are constantly thinking of things that they can do to provide a better opportunities for women veterans. Mm -hmm. So again, I encourage everyone that's a veteran that's watching this, if you're female, to get connected to Woven. Um, yeah. I joined Woven mm -hmm. when I first came to the Charlotte area. I was looking for ways to get involved, looking right. for ways to connect. And I, I found out about Woven and mm -hmm. I've just been a part of the woven community ever since. Literally, we are women who are woven together. Mm -hmm. Our experiences have woven us together. Our military um, backgrounds have woven us together. We mm -hmm. learn from one another each and every time we are able to come together. And that helps to encourage us and to keep us in an attitude of gratitude. So um, as a peer leader, that's an opportunity uh, that we have that we open up to those women veterans uh, that come into the organization to learn about what Woven is. Mm -hmm. And also we talk about topics that as veterans that we all go through and we support each other through those things. Because again, you know, uh, being a veteran, there are some things that happen in our military career that if you're not a veteran, you simply just can't relate to. You just you just can't. You may have empathy for us, but you just can't relate to. So we're there to, to help you to, to get through that and yeah. to and to take that journey with you. So uh, the peer leaders are there to kind of guide and facilitate those groups. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, a lot of women who are wanting to become a part of Woven right now. And mm -hmm. we're ramping up our peer leaders so that we can have those intimate groups, those intimate settings where we can talk about topics that are relevant to women veterans to mm -hmm. share. Sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry, sometimes we, you know, uh, we reflect upon things that happen to us. But mm -hmm. in the end, we, we, we just have that bond, that connection that is so, so, so incredibly needed. And yeah. so I'm grateful for that. Uh, yeah. We have another program called the Bridges Program, mm -hmm. where we help to um, just provide that support to those women that are transitioning out of the military. Um, they do have programs already in place mm -hmm. for you if you're transitioning out to help you to set yourself up for success. Mm -hmm. But we offer this opportunity as a way to give you that personal experience. Oh, so you. you can listen to our story, um, have us there to answer those tough questions and just to, to be that guide for you so that once you transition out of the military, you don't feel by yourself. Yeah. And there are a lot of other ways that Woven is involved in the community. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I encourage any woman veteran to connect to the Women Veteran Network. Yes. And that's nationwide. Uh, or, yes. yeah, okay. Nationwide. That's it's a national, it is a national organization. Yes, it is. Okay. That's powerful. Powerful. I know a few friends I was sharing with you before that uh, is in the military and some of the experiences they've had. So get involved in that. Well, is it woven, right? Yes, ma'am. Woven. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Because we need, like, again, we need one another, especially transitioning from the military to what is a civilian. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we are, you know, <laughs> I know my brother made a career out of, a, in fact, the Air Force as well. So he spent many years there and he enjoyed it, had a great time, traveled all over the world. And so, yeah, I know the military has a lot of added value too to his life and his family because they've been all over. Yeah. So that's powerful. And a lot of young people don't think about the military. So I think, I hope they're listening that that could be another option for them, you know, <clears throat> because uh uh everybody's not meant to go to school. i mean some go to and you can go to school even while you're in the military so you know yes that's what i did that's i got my degree my master's degree when okay. i was in the military i went right out of high school i graduated mm -hmm. in may and i enlisted into the air force in july uh -huh. and so i was able to travel see the world get a degree and just have a, a great time all in the military so yes it's possible okay. And it made you the person that you are now, such a phenomenal woman, just, you know, really 
showed all your abilities and talents and gifts uh, through that. So uh, please, young people, and even uh, people considering, you know, military may be an option. You know, we all have choices in life, you know, so sure. that could be another choice or another option for the young people to to take instead of uh, going this way, you can go that way <laughs> and be grateful about it because, you know, <clears throat> It'll expand your thinking. It'll expand your your life, really, you know? So you and your husband got any plans for this Thanksgiving coming up next week already? (laughs) Yes, yes. This is actually our first Thanksgiving as husband and wife. So we are super excited about that. And that's something that I'm grateful for. Yes, Um, yes. Yes, I'm so grateful for that because... I've had some challenges and, and God has truly blessed me with a, a true, a true soulmate. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. But yes, we're celebrating our first Thanksgiving. We're going to be traveling to the good old Mississippi and uh, eat some good country food and just have a wonderful time with family. So I'm looking forward to some downtime. Yes. So yes, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful season of Thanksgiving for us. Yes. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. And enjoy those memories and, and that time that you have together with family. Cause there's nothing like it. You know, it's just nothing like it. I tell you. <laughs> So that's part. So Mississippi. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> remember the M-I-S-S-I-S-S. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? That's how I remember how to spell it today. <laughs> <I know. laughs> awesome. Well, I think uh, uh, Robin uh, Roberts is from Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. But, uh, yeah, but that's powerful, powerful. I tell you, it's been a joy listening to you, talking to you about being grateful and and your wisdom and your experience. And I love those three points that you made. I want you to repeat it again for the audience to know that it's not always about the good things, but those other things that made you who you are. Yes, ma'am. So I had shared uh, at the beginning of this podcast uh, some things that I'm grateful for. And I'm grateful for my mistakes I'm grateful for my challenges and I'm grateful for my disappointments in my life and my military career and even in my business. You know, um, we as women, we wear a lot of hats. We do a lot of things. And sometimes we are expected to have this S on our chest all the time as women. But just know that it's okay if you don't feel like putting the uniform on that day. (laughs) If you don't feel like being the superhero that day, it's okay. And um, truly from my mistakes, I learned how to improve and become better. From my challenges, I was able to grow. I'm still growing because I'm still being challenged. And then with my disappointments, it's given me appreciation for those things that really matter and to not worry about those things that really don't. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so powerful. That's a book. That's a book. Yeah, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to share your wisdom, like I said, and your your knowledge and your insight and your experience. I truly honor you and I appreciate you, my friend. Thank Thank you so so much much. for saying yes. (laughs) Until next time and next month, what we'll do, because I'm on the first and the third Wednesday of every month is Wisdom Wednesday podcast. I was thinking that we'll do like a recap of 2023. And so I may have you back on All right. time of just, just refocusing, you know, how 2023 is coming rapidly to an end and what do you have planned for the next year, 2024? And so sometimes we just had to do a recap so we can forge forward to what we're going to do because 2024, listen to me, everyone, it's going to be a phenomenal year. If you believe that it can be in your business, in your personal life, in your spiritual life, whatever, you got to make a plan and work that plan and you'll see the fruit of your labor. You really will. So I'm excited. I'm excited. We're going to do a recap of 2023 and then look forward to what's happening uh, in 2020. Are you ready for 2024, Mia? I know you are. Yes, I am ready. I am ready, 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 set, let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Until next month, be blessed, be safe, and happy, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye.